Hello everyone, my name is Evo and welcome to Cooking with the Koyas. It was a year ago when we made some sausage uh, and if you haven't seen that video yet, making sausage from scratch, I'll put a link in the description for you, you can check it out. But today's episode folks, we're going to pick it up from having made the sausage and what we're going to do today is prep our sausage and we're going to dry it. We're going to air dry it the old fashioned Italian way. I grew up doing it this way. My father did it this way. Grandfather did it this way. I'm sure there's a science behind it, but this is plain old just tradition. This is how we hung them and, and dried them. Nothing technical about it. I'm going to show you how it's done. So these ones I've already got prepped and ready to go. Uh, I've got these two left. This one is just about done, but I want to show you, you see how I've got the, them tied in links here? Okay, you don't need the links, but the reason for tying is because this link is soft. And when we're drying our sausage, we want the, the, the casing to be full and tight so that the air escapes easier. So if you've got a loose casing or a soft casing like this, what you do is quite simply just make a knot and tie it, tie it once, tie it twice. And now what we've done is we have just compressed and tightened, tightened this casing up. And I'm going to show you how I know it's tight. You're going to see um, a little bit of the result of that. So. The other thing I want to mention, sometimes they're really loose. You can just twist the casing and you'll see people twist the casing and you'll make links that way. That's fine too, but sometimes what will happen is you could break it when you do that. I like to tie them and I'll tell you why. Some of them, I know there's one in here that I went to tie it and it, this one right here. So I went to tie it and I don't know if you could see there or not, but it's not tied very much. It didn't go in. If you notice this knot went all the way down, this one barely went in because it's already tight. So if I would have tightened this knot all the way down to the bottom, I would have, I would have broke the casing. I don't want to do that. I want the casing tight, but not broken. So that's why I like to tighten them by hand. I can feel, I know when to stop, uh, as opposed to twisting the casing. Okay, next thing we got to do, this is extremely important poke a hole or holes throughout our sausage. And when I mean throughout, it's got to be completely throughout, top side, bottom side, inside, outside. That's going to allow the air to escape from the sausage. My buddy Joe put me onto this tool a number of years ago. But before this, we used to prick with a, with a pin. You know, like a, a pin with a little ball head on it, just that they use in sewing? Prick, 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 one hole at a time. This at least we do three at a time. Let me show you how it's done. Okay, so before I start pricking holes, I just want you to see, you see where I put the pressure, I tied this, and I'm hoping you can see on the camera, but where I pricked the holes here earlier, you can see there's little bits of meat actually coming out of the holes. You probably can see them good right over here. Um, and that's because of the pressure is actually pushing a little bit of meat out of those holes, and that's perfectly fine. In fact, that's what we want. So let's get this one out of the way. So, quite simply, take your sausage pricker and start making holes and work your way all the way around and go back again. And when you've done going back, go back again. So I guess you're getting the message here. You can't make too many holes. In fact, the more holes, the better because we need those holes for the air to escape so that the sausage dries on the inside and the outside. So I'm going to make more holes all along the top here. And this, like I say, this, this tool is, is great because I'm making three holes at one time and it's the right size. It's the right thickness. It's perfect. So like, for example, if I were to try to use a fork to do this, it would, the holes would be way too big and it's going to just pop open my casing. So this little sausage pricker is the ticket right here. Okay, and when you think you've done enough, you know what I always say, do some more. Okay, <laughs> so that's the one side. Now we gotta flip it over and do the other side. And this is the thing. You're gonna do the sides, you gotta do the outside, you gotta do the inside. You want holes basically everywhere. 
And if you don't put enough holes in, it's not going to dry up on you and you'll end up uh, possibly losing your sausage. So the holes, needless to say, are extremely, extremely important. And again, when you think you have enough, make a few more. Don't be shy with this part. In fact, when we were making sausage, we always had one person on the machine, one person filling the casing, one person tying, and one person doing the pricking of the sausage. So a little assembly line, I guess you could say. Okay, I think I have enough, so I'm just gonna do a little bit more. And don't make, and make sure you get around the, the ends there as well. So now, to do the, the top side, I'm gonna hold it in my hand. Now just be careful if you do this, you don't want to accidentally prick your, your finger. So I just kinda of keep my hand away and then just slowly work your way along the side. Now having said that, you could also do this. Okay, whatever you're comfortable with, but the main thing is you do not wanna forget poking holes in that area. Okay, so let me finish doing this and then I'll do the inside here as well. So I've made all my holes and now of course, I'm just making a few more all the way around. You're better off to be safe than sorry. Okay, now, and this by the way, it really is called a sausage pricker. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not making that up. That's what it's actually called. Okay, so now uh, as you can see, see how soft that is? Very soft, so there's, there's room. I can probably tie this knot all the way down. So uh, now, how far do I leave it? I just leave a few inches. All you wanna do is compress that area. So you don't want it too small, you don't want it too big, because you won't have the, the same effect. So that's probably pretty good right there. But I'm not really making a link for any other reason other than just to compress, compress the meat and to help it dry better, to help push that air out. That's all I'm doing here. Okay, and I'm just tying all the way down to the bottom with no problem. Nothing broke, so that's, that's really good. Okay, and probably one more over here. We'll do it right about there. Yeah, all the way to the bottom, and again, nothing broke, but I can see that, look at how nice and firm that is now. See there? That's what you want right there. Okay, so now the meat is compressed nicely. It's got all these holes. You, I don't know if you can see, but the meat's already starting to come out a little bit from the holes. So I know I've got a, a lot of pressure on here. Now comes the fun part. We're gonna take these down to my cantina uh, and we're going, to, we're gonna hang them because on the ends when I tied these, so when I, tied the, when I made these sausages earlier, right? I, I tied a knot on the end here so that I can hang my sausage properly, just like that. So we're gonna go down to my cantina and I'll show you how to hang them because there's one thing you wanna avoid when you hang sausage and uh, I'll show you when we get down there. In my cold room, I, AKA cantina, this is probably one of the most important things. Again, I don't know the science behind it. This is traditional. It, today is actually January 17th. Uh, and the temperature here is looking like 38 degrees in the cantina right now, which is perfect. Uh, but this right here is more important, the humidity. You want to control the humidity. What I've found is if the humidity is around 70%, 60 on the low side, 80 on the high side, that's fine for, sauce, for drying sausage. If it starts to get up to 90% humidity, you could get mold on the outside of your sausage, so you don't want a high humidity. And if it gets too low, if you get like 30, 40% humidity, very dry, then what happens is the sausage dries too quickly on the outside and doesn't dry on the inside and then it'll go bad on you. So that's about as technical as my Italian background is gonna take me. Let's hang some sausage. Okay, so hopefully the light bulb behind my head isn't disrupting things that much, but a little bit about my cantina. First of all, it's facing north. Anytime, if you have a cold room or a cantina facing north, that's the best, that's the coldest spot of the house. Otherwise, east or west are also okay. South would be the worst, okay? It'll still work, but not as good as, as north or east or west. So north is the best. Now, my cantina, has three vent holes in it. 
Um, all you really need are two, one incoming and one outgoing, but I happen to have three on mine. It's a bigger cantina and it works well. And you could probably see the two holes behind me right here. Uh, and again, <laughs> nothing high tech. In the one hole, I got a piece of cardboard coming in, kind of forcing the air to go down. And on the other hole, I put a, an old laundry basket uh, up against it. The reason I did that is because before I did that, uh, when, when I didn't do that, I hung my sausage up, but the air would blow in through those vents and it would dry the one side of the sausage and the other side of the sausage would be raw. And then the, the one side would dry away too quickly. So to prevent that, let's call it blow drying of my sausage, I just stopped the air. So that's what I've done there. Let me hang one up here. I've got these pegs. So that's basically it. You want to hang them up. Now, here's the thing. This is also very, very important. Okay. Uh, when you hang your sausage, you do not want your sausage touching. So for example, if I did this, you see how they're touching here? That sausage is touching here. What will happen is it'll turn black in that area and it'll go bad. So when you're hanging your sausage, you always, all you need is a, a, a sixteenth of an inch, but you have to have airspace in between your sausage. So what I would do here is I will hang one up here instead. So there we go. Now, if I wanted to, I could have just put this over here. In fact, okay. And then I could take another one and hang it up still beside that, right about there. So you know, that, that is no problem at all. This is no problem. So I'm gonna continue hanging these up uh, in the cantina, spacing them out. And uh, w one other thing I should make note of is the string. There is actually a string that you could use specifically for sausage tying. You want a good quality string and you wanna make sure your knots are tight because if not what will happen is your knot will slip and <laughs> you'll find your sausage on the ground in the morning. So you want a good quality string. Uh, I'm actually using, believe it or not, crochet cotton. Uh, Laura had some crochet cotton that I'm using and it is super strong but there's actual string for actually tying sausage. Now the other thing I should mention, as opposed to hanging it up like this, that's a lot of weight on that one. If I had just a little stubby thing, no problem, but because they're a little bit bigger and heavier, I like to hang them up on both. So it's less pressure on the sausage, it hangs better, and it's gonna dry better. So just a few tips there, and that's it. Once I hang these up, like I say, today is January 17th, I will come in the morning and check just to make sure that no knots have slipped. So I'm hoping when I show up tomorrow morning that there are no sausages on the ground. And I don't think there will be because I've double checked my knots, but you should always check the next day just to make sure. And otherwise what we'll do is I'll check back with you in about a week because there's, there's something that I'm gonna do in about a week from now and I wanna show you what that is. And then we're going to keep progress on this as we go along, right to the point where we, where we have them dried and we cut into them and we taste them. Fast forward one week, today is January 24th. And uh, yes, I should mention, I do this during the cold winter months. You need the cold winter months. And I also like to mention, don't worry if during that time frame, if the temperature goes above zero for a day or two, it's not an issue. So it'll, it'll drop back down and, and because the sausages are spiced, they will cure, it's no worries. But do this during the winter and it usually typically takes four to eight weeks for them to dry out and be ready to eat, depending on your cantina. Okay, let's do a temperature and humidity check. So as you can see, our temperature is sitting around 38 degrees Fahrenheit. That's very, very good. And our humidity has gone up a bit to about 75%, but that's still in a very good range. Regarding the humidity, if you can't get it under control 
and it's too humid and you start to get a little bit of mold on your sausage, get a damp towel and just wipe it off immediately. Just keep it clean, keep it clean uh, until they're dried and cured. If your cantina is too dry and not humid enough, you could put a bucket of water in or even splash it on the ground and, and create a humid environment. Or of course you could use uh, two other things. You could use a humidifier to add humidity or a dehumidifier to take away the humidity. But ultimately, that's the range you want, as I mentioned earlier. Okay, now this is what I do after one week. So you can probably notice the sausage has already dried up a little bit. The skin is all dry. They're not wet anymore. And if you let them stay as is, they will dry on their own because we poked all those holes in there uh, with no problem. But I like to help them a bit just to make sure there's no air or no gaps in the middle. So what I do after one week is just I just come by and I squeeze very simply just squeeze the sausage so you almost end up with two flat sides. Okay, so all I'm doing here is compressing that sausage meat inside the casing to help it stay with no air gaps in the middle. Because as I mentioned before, when these dry out, you want there to be no air in the middle because if there is, it'll turn black and moldy and be uneditable. So that's the little tip that I do right here after one week. And from that point on now, all you do after you've given them a squeeze and flattened them out, now you just let them sit. Monitor your cantina, make sure the humidity is under control, but that's it for hard work. All you do now is gotta be patient and wait and let's let these dry out. So next time you see me, these will be dried We'll check them out and we'll do the taste test. Fast forward, February 21st. Here we are and our sausage is dried and hard. So it's been about five, five and a half weeks. So the temperature outside, it's been warm for a couple days. Right now it's just over 40 degrees here in the cantina, so it's still cool. And you see my, uh, my humidity is at 75%. And it's fluctuated a little bit, but it stayed in that great zone. I haven't had to adjust my humidity at all. I've been coming in every week and checking it out. And all you do is just, just give it a squeeze. And it's, it's hard throughout. If it's still soft, then obviously it's not cured yet. But this is dried and hard throughout. So what I'd like to do now, we're going to take these down. I want to show you how I preserve these. Um, also going to share an easy way to remove the casing and then of course we're going to cut into one and do the taste test. I'll show you what it looks like on the inside. So these sausages dried up absolutely beautifully. As you can see there's no mold, they're perfectly clean and because we squoze them we gave them that squeeze they're a little bit flat and narrow as opposed to round and that's perfectly fine. Now to store these Back in the day, our parents, grandparents, and generations before, what they used to do is take your dried sausage, and you can still do this today if you want, they would put it into a container, call it a jar, a jug, a pail if you have a lot of sausage, and then fill that container up with oil, vegetable oil, the, the cheapest vegetable oil they could find. And basically, you wanna make sure the oil goes over top of the sausage so that there is no sausage exposed to the air. It'll keep in that oil indefinitely, as long as it's not exposed to the air. As you take it out, if the oil level starts to drop, you need to top it up and make sure that the sausage is always under oil. Nowadays, we do things a little differently. We're gonna vacuum seal ours. Let's do that right now. What I like to do with the sausage is, first thing, remove the, remove the strings, just to clean things up a bit. We don't need to vacuum seal the strings. And then you could vacuum pack this whole sausage just as is, but I like to typically, you know, if they're in links, I'll just cut them into links. And then quite simply, into the bag they go. Let's give this a seal. There we go, perfectly sealed. Look at that, absolutely beautiful. Now, here's the beauty of vacuum packing. Once it's vacuum sealed as this is, this can now stay on the, it can stay on the kitchen counter 
all year if you want. It does not need refrigeration. Again, the key is there's no air, just like we did what I mentioned with the oil. No air got into the sausage. Same with the vacuum sealing. No air gets in, it'll preserve and it'll sit there at room temperature, no problem at all. Okay, and then what I like to do also is this with a, with a Sharpie, I'll just put a date on here just to make sure in case uh, if I make a lot of sausage and I have year over year turnover, which is rare <laughs> as I usually eat it, but putting a date on there always helps as well. Okay, let me show you an easy way to remove the casing and then let's do a taste test. Now the casing is very hard. It's dry, it's hard, and it, it does not come off that easy. And you could pick away at this for a long time to try to get that casing off. However, the easy way, cold water, just run it under cold water and then with your fingers, more or less uh, a kind of massage massage the sausage just rub it and what you're doing here is you're rehydrating the casing okay and as you rehydrate it it's going to get soft and pliable just as it was when we first stuffed it you know five and a half weeks ago so just continue to to work this under the water and if you make soprasata, if you make cup of coal, anything that has a casing on it, you can use the same method. Just put it under water, rub it, and rehydrate it. And as you can see, as it rehydrates, it starts to turn, you know, it starts to get white. See the white in color? And that's what you want to see because that's the color it was when we first started. So let's see if that's enough. It might be enough right there. So I just typically take a knife, cut a little edge. Now, unlike before, look at that. How See how easy that came out? Look at there. See that? It just peels right off. Now, of course, this is edible, but <laughs> please don't eat it. Take it off, remove it. You'll enjoy the dried sausage much better. There you go. And that's right here. That's the casing came off very, very easy. Now this will be easy to cut and let's see how it looks inside. Now when I cut the sausage, I like to cut it a bit on, a, on an angle and I like to cut it not too, too thick. As you can see here, a nice, what I'm gonna say, bite size. And take a look at the inside here, how it's, there's no holes, there's no air pockets. It's completely solid and dried right through. And that's exactly what you want. And that's why I squoze it earlier to A, help it dry out completely and, and make no air pockets. Because if there's air pockets in your sausage, in your dried sausage, you run the risk of it going bad. So there we have it. And you could probably see there are no air pockets in this sausage at all. It's completely dried and beautiful and it's going to have a great taste i know that and that's what i'm up to right now and when you cut them on an angle you see how they get a little bit a little bit bigger they're bigger than the actual size of the sausage so it adds a little bit there you go adds a little bit of size to your presentation as well and i like to serve this as a part of an appetizer or it makes for a great lunch with fresh italian bread and speaking of which let's take the taste test right now let's take another look at that beautiful dried sausage right there absolutely perfect i mentioned bread and yes of course i did make two fresh loaves of bread a little earlier we're gonna have it tonight nice and fresh and if you want to see one of my bread videos i'll put a link in the description for you but right now let's do the taste test unbelievable always amazes me how such a simple procedure, make the sausage or buy it, poke a whack of holes in it, hang it up in your cantina, X amount of weeks, weeks later, five, six weeks later, you've got beautifully dried sausage, which is absolutely fantastic. Fresh Italian bread, a little bit of olive oil, you're in for a treat. If you've never tried drying sausage, if you have access to a cold room or a cantina, please do it. Our parents, grandparents, generations have been doing this in our family. 
and we're gonna keep the tradition going right here, folks, and I'm hoping that the generations to come in the Koya family will continue making sausage and continue drying sausage and enjoying it as a simple meal or appetizer as we're gonna to do today. Folks, wherever you're tuning in from today, I wanna to thank you ever so much for joining me on today's episode of Cooking with the Koyas. And once again, if you wanna see how I made the sausage, I'll put a link to that sausage making as well. Until next time, buon appetito. Fantastic. <laughs>